the crappy proprietary crypto. I mean, they've said enough. I mean, it's, it's sufficient for me to say, well, you know, go away. Um, you know, why don't you just use AES or, or DES or, you know, something that's, you know, generally well audited and generally well understood and, and where people think, you know, there's a sufficient level of, of, of uh, security involved. Um, proprietary encryption, I don't think it's going to work. Um, yeah, more questions? Okay, fellow in the beard. Uh, okay, I think this fellow from China wants to save money on public transport. Um, but um, I think in Germany there's also a card system, some, there's, this, there's a standard from the VDV Verein oder Verband Deutscher Verkehrsverbünde oder Verkehrsunternehmen, die, um, okay, in English, okay, they, they standardize all this, um, this, this stuff with, with stamping machines or the displays in the bus that says next station so and so. There's this all, this stuff is standardized. And also they have a smart card based system, but I think it's deployed in Hannover or something. It should be possible to make some further investigations if this is a good system or not, because I think it's some years old and so maybe has some flaws. Yeah, yeah, that might very well be the case. As I said, it's, it, I've, I've sort of left the RFID world uh, in 2006. It was just, uh, you know, I, I made uh, one, one attempt and I was very lucky to find such an extremely, uh, I don't know, uh, welcoming system. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, an easy system. Um, uh, but yeah, I have no idea about Hanover. But uh, of course, I mean, as I said, just go ahead. RFID readers are not expensive. All the documentation is out there, the protocol stacks, the, the implementations of the various MyFair classic attacks. Uh, just uh, check for yourself. It's, uh, uh, it's no, no magic involved. Okay, other questions? If you put your hand in the air, please. Okay, so that fellow there, and then um, you in the shirt that I can't read. <laughs> the My Fair break was hardly kept hush hush over the past couple of years, particularly here at CCC. Um, so I imagine the guys involved know these cards aren't too secure, yet they're pushing ahead anyway. Do you have any insight as to how much it would cost them to roll out something half decent? Um, well, uh, the typical claim that the companies, the proponents of these systems make is that it's so horribly expensive to do. Um, but then, I mean, okay, you have to go back one step. Uh, so what is the cost of deploying an alternative system? Last time I checked, and this was already in 2006, a MyFair desk fire card providing, you know, triple desk encryption, um, even at that time, was less than one US dollar more expensive than the MyFair Classic card. So the, the cost on the card side is that, yeah, you have to spend less than one US dollar more on each of the cards, which I think, you know, given that you charge for the cards anyway as a deposit or something, shouldn't be a, a problem. The other part is that, of course, in the readers, you then need to implement triple desk um, um, and uh, uh, I have to have that in hardware or in software or in your microcontroller or something. Uh, but then again, we have the problem. I think it's actually the same problem we see in GSM based stations that people buy, people design, develop, sell, and buy such systems without previously thinking of in the field software upgrades and of having sufficient resources left over, as in flash and RAM and CPU processing power, to upgrade systems after they have been deployed. Um, and that sort of is, is a claim that has been made by numerous companies, and uh, I also think EasyCard has, has mentioned this against some of the, uh, uh, to the, some of the academic uh, uh, guys in, in Taiwan, that, uh, yeah, they just cannot implement triple desk in all their readers because uh, they don't have the available uh, flash or whatever uh, uh, program memory in, in those readers to actually uh, put all the code in there. Um, but yeah, then I think the initial investment is already broken because yeah, buying hardware that's supposed to be there for decades uh, without thinking of future proof and upgradability is uh, again, I would say, of a security related technology is negligent. Um, in, in, I'm sorry, it's sort of off topic, but I, I know more about the GSM side of things and there you can think that in, I think the GSMA has, yeah, in a GSMA statement, in 2009, they have the operators have started to think, started to think whether they should mandate in the future that cryptographic algorithms should be a software-only upgrade in their equipment. 
right? So, so 19 years or whatever after GSM has first been deployed, they start to think whether in the future maybe it's a good idea to keep algorithms as a software upgrade without having to replace the hardware. And that's sort of an, you know, some, some idea of how the hardware industry, I don't know, I don't know where they live. They live on the Mars or something. Okay, um, where are we? This gentleman here, and then we'll take a question from IRC. Okay, it's not just a question, but an um, experience I had myself. Um, I'm from a university, and um, we have a payment system which is based on um, MyFair. And I was just doing some research, um, in fact, the exact same thing as you did. And uh, we do pay um, by MyFair, and it's as insecure as uh, this um, thing from Taiwan. So, um, and I know that other universities in Germany um, do have the same um, technique as we have. So, it's, it's common also in Germany. Yeah, um, I'm not doubting that it is uh, common here. Um, I'm just uh, not sure whether, for example, there are 18 million students having such cards in Germany. I would be surprised. So the, the deployment size uh, of this system in Taiwan is, is definitely quite uh, large. Um, yeah, but once again, even to those universities, I mean, it, yeah, it comes back to uh, the, the actual cost of the equipment is not you know, not too high, too much higher if you, if you want to have something uh, that's, that offers a higher level of security. Um, one, one thing I once heard from NXP was that they've never considered the MyFair Classic as a security product internally. It was, you know, they never thought of it as a security product. They have their secure uh, smart cards like Smart MX and, and uh, the Deskfire and so on, and the MyFair was, you know, was just, was never intended as a secure product in the first place. And uh, yeah, but then you have companies that always try to save the last couple of cents without thinking of security, and that's, that's what we see all over the industry. And uh, then you end up with problems. And of course, fixing the problem now after having deployed 18 million cards and God knows how many tens of thousands of readers is going to be a very expensive proposition. Um, you know, having it fixed from the first time would probably have been, have been less, much less expensive in, you know, but well. And now we'll take a question from IRC. Yeah, um, the interwebs were discussing that um, in Amsterdam they introduced MyFair for public transport just this year, just as a side remark. And um, they were also discussing uh, how you could make such a system more secure. So um, would you, could you think of any way of having a payment system using MyFair get more secure, so they suggested like a server side based system or online system? Yeah, that's what I mentioned initially, right? If you have an online system, which many people again believe is too expensive, but if you have an online system, then of course uh, nobody can artificially add money. All the threat you, you have remaining then is a cloning threat or something like that, where you can just clone somebody else's card and then spend his money. Um, which uh, is uh, still remaining at that point. And I think, you know, what are we talking about? About less than one US dollar for each card. Come on. I mean, why, why is anyone arguing about that, about that amount of money? I don't understand why this is such a big problem to, to buy a, a more secure card. Um, Yeah, but go and ask the users, you know, go and ask the users. If, if, if you go to a user and say, you know, do you want to pay one dollar more uh, but to have a card that uh, uh, nobody can, can clone and uh, uh, can spend your money, then everyone would say, of course I pay one dollar more. There are lots of people who's, who spend money every month on having their ISP run a firewall for them, right? If people are willing to pay money for it, so you just, you just say, yeah, you know, you want a more safe, safer card, pay one dollar more. Um, why not? Mm. Okay, uh, this gentleman here. And do we have any other questions? If you've got a question, put your hand up, please. Um, anyone, any others? Oh, one there. What any others? Oh, and that gentleman over there in the back. Okay, cool. Take it away. What is the approximate uh, price for a card for um, um, companies like MRT for a single card or for 1,000 cards? I have no clue, to be honest. Um, 
I mean, as I said, last time I was researching anything about pricing in RFID cards was in 2006, and only the quantities like uh, uh, 1,000 units, right? And that, that's the quantities we bought for our open PCD cards. And there I think it was something like uh, 40 cents for a, a, a MyFair Classic and $1.20 or something for a, an a desk fire, but this is, you know, four years ago, the prices may have changed quite a bit um, by now. Um, I have, and, and also in larger volume. Um, yeah. Okay, okay, and we've got five minutes, so that's probably one or two more questions. So, uh, this gentleman, who, who wanted to ask? It was, yeah, it was you. you. Um, have you tried whether they do an online check when you go for a refund? I've never gone for a refund, no. I, I, to be honest, I only read about it. I wouldn't even know where to go. I would have to check where to go to get a refund, no. Um, no. I don't think that's a very good idea. Let's, let's not do that. A Taiwanese prison is not cool. Okay, and uh, we have time for one more, and then uh, uh, Harold uh, will, I don't know, where you're planning on going after this. I have, I have adjusted uh, the comments. So it, in universities where you have these things to buy your Mensa food or stuff, uh, there are some, also some universities where you can your study fees with these cards. And so if you have problems with your finance and you find the thing that the study fees are too much, maybe you can do something against it. So there's uh, one chap there and then we'll uh, call it because you've got a couple of minutes. Yeah, uh, maybe in order to raise awareness in the minds of the people responsible for such systems, uh, maybe it would uh, be an option to go the fire sheep way and create an, a trivial uh, a program that is so trivial to use that it could be used really by uh, a lot of people easily. Um, for somebody who really cares about the deployment of such um, uh, weak systems, maybe that's the only way to go. Um, a trivial or a, a trivial breaking tool. Well, I think it's already fairly fairly easy to do, um, but uh, well, um, you know, I think uh, the attacks have been publicized very well and very widely, um, especially in the Netherlands and in the UK. And uh, you know, I, uh, yeah, I, to, just one more statement. I just remember that I had a conversation with a large telecommunications operator in Europe uh, recently. And they also use uh, one of the, not my fair, but one of the competing but equally bad security-wise <laughs> systems. Um, and they said they are desperately looking for a supplier. I mean, this is a large telecommunications company. We're talking about, you know, hundreds or, th no, actually thousands of locations where these readers and door access control systems and so on are deployed for access control to all of their, their facilities. And they said they have not been able to find any single supplier that would use uh, an RFID card with decent level of security in their system. It's, they, they, they could not find it on the market. Right. So there's a clear failure of the market to provide adequate level of security. They, they would even want to buy it, but they cannot find a supplier for it. Right. The cards are there, you know, the customers are there, but somehow the, the access control industry is, uh, I don't know, sleeping. I smell a business opportunity for someone enterprising in the audience. <laughs> <laughs>